we go. All right. So, guys, we are joined today with Greg Rogowski. Greg Rogowski is the CEO of Mining City. And um, we are here to essentially talk about what is Mining City as far as, uh, you know, how can this company, where did it come from? How will it be sustaining for the future? Why can people feel comfortable about being here? So forth and so on. Uh, these things are, are really important uh, for people to know. And, you know, also touch on a little bit, uh, if you can, Greg, because there's a, there's a fair amount of people here that are also based in the United States. Yeah. So obviously, you know, going into that, um, so people can feel a little bit more comfortable about that as well. So I'm going to turn the floor over to you and then we'll do a QA and a at the end. Okay. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. It's, it's great to be in front of you here. I'm sorry I couldn't do it in person. It's, um, but that way, at least I get to welcome you all in my home. Actually, it's not my home. It's my mom's home because this is where the lockdown found me. So, yeah, full disclosure here. I'm a 46-year-old man living with my mom now. <laughs> but, guys, uh, I just want to talk a bit about myself. I'm going to talk a bit about mining future, where we came, mining city, where we came from mining city where we are mining city where we will be i hope that a lot of questions will be answered if not the q a session after this is going to help you i'm uh okay i'm going to start with me and my name is greg Rogowski, as you just said and i am polish and i am based in poland mining city is based in poland in terms of operations so our offices are here our our marketing staff is here our legal staff is here as well but uh, the farms and the whole technical, uh, the whole technical, well, the, the technical stuff for the farms is also <laughs> based in Poland, but uh, it is a separate company. And I'm going to get into that right now. So, uh, first of all, I am Polish and I am 46 year old, as you know, and my background is uh, marketing. You can actually find me online on LinkedIn. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on many pages. Uh, the name Greg, it's just an anglicized version of my Polish name. So you, if you do Greg Rogowski, you probably can find me, but it's also Grzegorz. I can spell it for you out on, a, on, a, on, on the chat now. So if you can find me, uh, you see many times, many times I've been asked by people, you can't, we can't find you online or, you know, the Greg Rogowski, when we find, when we look you up, it's someone else. Uh, why do you have a different name? My name is Polish because I am Polish, so that's how you spell it. And if you if you look for me under this name, you'll probably have much better chances of finding me online. So that's all full disclosure. Okay, let's go back. Uh, let's go back to back in my history. So my history is practically all life I've been dealing with marketing. I've been working with marketing companies in Poland, which were. Uh, media houses, advertising houses, outside marketing consulting companies. And uh, I used to even work in marketing, which was actually my last job before doing cryptocurrencies. Was, uh, I was working for a company called Ubisoft. And maybe some of you know it. It's one of the largest game, computer game producers in the world. And actually, this was the company that started me in the field of cryptocurrencies because they came up with this idea of... Uh, doing cryptocurrencies in the games. So your computer where you're playing could actually mine for cryptocurrencies, the tokens that they would that they would invent. And you could actually use those tokens not only to buy stuff in the game, but also in the real world, which was a groundbreaking project. And uh, they basically delegated me from the Polish office to find out more about uh, cryptocurrencies because I had no idea what it was. And I went on this uh, three-month fact-finding mission. And after three months, I felt like, ah, uh, I have to get into those cryptocurrencies for myself. Like, screw, screw Ubisoft. I mean, like, farewell, guys. I mean, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this has a, so much more potential than just computer games. There's so many, so many more real world applications. I have to get into that. So I started looking for companies that could hook me up in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the cryptocurrencies business and into the cryptocurrencies uh, industry. And, uh, Long story short, the company I found, which was 
truly the best was called Mind Best. And the CEO of that company is and was Eyal Avramovic. And I started working for him in 2018, so over two years ago, uh, in a capacity of vice president for marketing, real marketing, uh, regular marketing. The company was selling cloud mining packages. And uh, at that time, at that time, at that time, uh, at that time, I think BTC was about three thousand five hundred dollars, three thousand seven hundred, something like that. But uh, Mindbest was the only company in the world that was mining Bitcoin profitably, and it was doing for a combination of something that we called smart mining. This was actually a term I'm, I coined, and smart mining consisted of two things. First of all, we had very cheap electrical power from Kazakhstan. This is still. This is still the cornerstone of what we are doing, cheap electrical power. And second thing was that Eyal, who is an engineer, he took uh, those mining machines and he took the mining boxes, like uh, ant mine boxes, ant boxes they were called, and he looked them over and uh, he basically improved on the entire mining process by spacing out the computers, by adding new cooling, by adding new features that, uh, actually made those 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 computers require less maintenance they prolonged the life of the machines and the costs went down so with this low costs we were able to mine bitcoin profitably while bitcoin was in a bearish market to that end it was still very very difficult for us to sell any mining packages because well two two reasons first of all the the the, the gold rush for bitcoin was over i mean the bitcoin had a slump from the old time high of 27 thousand dollars and or twenty three thousand dollars when it was down to three thousand that was one thing and the second thing is this is still a fairly new industry so and it is very complicated it requires a lot of uh, a lot of explanation it requires a lot of education and what you need is basically to explain it to people which cannot be done in the in the in in terms of realistic marketing i mean there's no amount of money i could just pour into marketing to have an educational campaign to educate thousands of people on how to enter mining or how to enter cryptocurrencies markets or how to enter the industry as a whole so but we were still struggling we were still trying to make money selling regular packages and we went to uh the end of 2018 we went to uh to south korea for a for a conference and I had this presentation uh, which was imaginatively called how to mine Bitcoin profitably in a bearish market and uh, the presentation was as you can imagine me explaining how you can mine profitably in a bearish market the point was you can only do it with mine best you can only do it with smart mining you have to take into account a lot of different factors which we have and we were really surprised that no one else actually took those factors into into consideration but i suppose that's because uh many many investors who came into the, the into the crypto industry at the all-time high of bitcoin they didn't really know much about industry really they weren't engineers they were just investors so they were just like throwing money at an opportunity that was soon about to run out because uh because of various things i'm not going to get into technicalities why why that happened when it was, while the Bitcoin was pumping up, I mean, it was actually set to fall uh, lower. We actually, we actually observed that curve and we knew what was happening and why it happened. We also knew why it happened. So after the presentation, uh, a lot of people came up to us and they were really interested in, uh, you know, do we have farms? Do we really farm? Do, are we really making money out of it? And we were. We were making money out of it for ourselves and we were sustaining the farms. The thing was that we wanted to sell mining packages. Obviously, we wanted to expand. And we were approached by a company called IDAM. Uh, the CEO of the company, Mr. Hanil Park, he came up to us and he said, guys, that's an impressive presentation. It's an impressive product. If you can prove to me that you have the farms, that you actually do mine profitably, that actually the entire smart mining idea works, I am going to buy those packages from you in bulk. You know, I've got clients for at least $5 million per month who can buy those packages from you. Uh, but there's a catch. I said, so what's the catch? And it's like, we have to do it. You have to apply a network marketing system 
to your sales. And, uh, and it has to be a very specific network marketing system because we are working with a network marketing company who are offering, who are your competitors, they are offering mining packages and uh, they are not paying out. They're, they're, there's no mining happening. And we believe that there's something wrong with that. We, we think that we are being cheated. We think that we are being actually taken for a ride. If you can prove that you actually can do it honestly and it's a true industry, we would rather do it with you. So, uh, so that's what we did. But straight out of a box, you can see straight out of a, you, you can see at the start, like I, I, we were not, we, were, we had no real life uh, experience in network marketing. We only had real life experience in mining Bitcoin and the mining industry and the crypto industry. So what we did is we looked at all the ins and outs of, of the business, legalities, you know, all the, the logistics, everything you, you, you have to take into account. And, uh, you know, think, knowing that we're actually based in Poland as well as companies, we decided to split up. So what we did is we created another company called Mining City. Actually, the company is called Profitech. Uh, Mining City, for all intents and purposes, is just a trademark name. And uh, we're still in the process of trademarking it. <laughs> so um, I, 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 I'm, I'm supposed to get an update on that tomorrow, actually. So we'll see how that happens. So, uh, so, so, so Mining City is a brand name. The company is Profitech. I am the sole owner of that company. And there's another company called Mindbest. And uh, the owner of that company is Eyal. So what happens? So what happens is that we have a very exclusive agency agreement and licensing agreement by which I, as Profitech, as Mining City, provide the website, I provide the marketing, I provide the legal protection and all the technical stuff, including product, its development, IT, IT security is provided by Mindvest. Now, why did we do it? First of all, it's because uh, the situation of network marketing vis-a-vis -vis, uh, mining packages is not very clear in, uh, in uh, uh, EU law. European Union has many laws. They crisscross each other on different borders, different countries. We're really unsure of what the laws really are. So we decided to set up the company in Cyprus, which is still in the European Union, as, it, as is Poland. So it is treated legally as one area. But Cyprus was definitely more friendly. It had better tax laws. And they actually provided us with a comfort letter saying that uh, what we do does not require any additional uh, licenses for financial services or stuff like that. The second thing, which was very important, is advertising. You see, when we did the overview of a market, it turned out that uh, it turned out that uh, many companies who we would consider competition were actually scams, and <laughs> and we could devise it like that because we looked at the companies, their income. Someone said like, "Well, we've made a billion dollars." And we looked at the hash rate of the entire pool, mining pool of Bitcoin, and we already knew like if you made billion dollars, your share of the pool would be at least 25% right now. And it is less than 2%. That means you're not spending money on, uh, on mining. You're not spending money on machines or infrastructure. You're just pocketing that money and you are doing a pyramid scheme, which is basically a Ponzi scheme. So, uh, so we thought like if everyone is doing this and everyone is cheating, we will be accused of uh, very same because because basically the the the, the model the business model is uh, you know is quite similar. So what we have to do is we have to be able to validate our farms, the product itself, through third party companies or third parties. And uh, via in in European Union law, if you are running a network marketing company, you cannot advertise your product. It's it's forbidden. So. If we got our product outsourced from Mindbest, that means they could advertise the product, which they do. They go around to all the trade fairs, all the conferences, all the shows, all the meetups. They sponsor them. And, you know, we've got the results because, first of all, we are validated. Second of all, we are advertising. And third, you know, we get accolades. Uh, last year, I think it was November, 
uh, Mindvest became top 10, one of the top 10 mining farms in the world. And they got this award uh, in Frankfurt, Germany. And, you know, like you have people who have to go see the farms. You have to, you have to prove yourself on the, on the pool. You know, there's like many different factors that go into actually getting such an award. And that also gives comfort to our clients, potential members, potential clients as well. So we thought like, this is, this is something that we're going to have to do. Another thing was obviously transparency. So, um, yeah, we became uncomfortably so visible to the entire world. So, you know, you can find me online, you can find Eyal online. We just, we don't shy away from that. Uh, we do those meetups like we do right now, talking about that. And uh, most of 2019 also was spent for us traveling and talking to people face to face. I mean, these Zoom meetings that we're doing right now, this is just a coronavirus situation. You, you know, normally I would be there up in your faces talking about that. But... Um, but well, at least you get to see my mom's living room. Anyway, and you know, and we started doing that. We started offering mining packages for Bitcoin. But there was also another twist to the story, because we found out that it's you know, if you're offering mining packages with a share of a mining pool, people actually don't know what they're getting. Since you have no idea as a client of how many other clients I have you know, you don't know which share of the pool you're getting. And obviously it also changes the daily, even hourly. So how can you be sure of the rewards, mining rewards that should come to you? You don't have any idea. So we decided to actually go to another, and to, we went another route and that route is actually much more legal and it's looked on favorably by governments here in, in Europe. And it's that we are selling terahash power which is basically computing power. Thanks to that, you could also, like when we were selling the Bitcoin mining packages, and you can see it on our website, when you buy the packages, you can go outside to cryptocompel.com and you can calculate for yourself how many mining rewards you will be getting on that very day. Obviously, as I said, it changes day to day depending on the difficulty of the network, but there's many things factoring in. Uh, crypto market is all about education and all that education, that knowledge means safety for members. So that's what we started doing. We started offering the Terahash power. We started offering a transparent company. We started offering third party validations. We also opened up our farms to visitors. So we had farms in Kazakhstan. Now we have Kazakhstan and China uh, and uh, options of farms elsewhere in the world. I'm not really at liberty to say because we basically also divide our responsibilities between two companies. So I am not mine best, I am mining city. I can talk about marketing, I can talk about a story, I can talk about a relationship, but like all the technicalities, I would have to get you someone from mining, from mine best to talk about that. And there's a way to do it, we'll touch on that as well. Back to the point. So we are selling those packages, we are doing the transparency thing, you know, we are, we are welcoming people, we are trying to get validated from third parties, but at some point, about May of 2019, the hash rate of the entire Bitcoin mining network went so high up and we had so many people actually joining the company that uh, it became unprofitable to mine Bitcoin. I mean, it was profitable, but, uh, you know, people were not getting any, you know, the, the, the mining rewards were just nothing like people expected or they wanted. So uh, in terms of network marketing and setting up your own business based on our product, it's difficult for you to sell. And also, you know, so, so the sales are starting to fall. If the sales are falling, we, are, cannot, we cannot build the infrastructure. It's a, it's a vicious circle, you know. So uh, first of all, we decided to prolong the mining period by 100 days. And uh, now that actually improved, that actually improved the, the system a bit. But soon we saw that, uh, you know, Bitcoin is not going anywhere in terms of mining because it is being overmined. And there are several problems with Bitcoin. First of all is overmining. It's like a, it's a dog -it dog world in mining Bitcoin. It's just like everyone is mining. Everyone who has a machine, they just turn it on and they hope for the best. And the best just doesn't happen. Because Bitcoin, and this is the second biggest fault of Bitcoin, is unevenly distributed. You see, um, 
about 0.6% of wallets for Bitcoin, they own over 68% of the coin in the world, which means that it's, uh, you know, it probably mirrors the world economy with the top 1%. But this top 1% actually, they regulate the market. They can influence it, and they do. If you go into any, any, any Bitcoin price analysis, you find this term whales. And whales are people who can manipulate the market to their own gain, uh, which we thought was unfair to say the least. But it was also worrisome because uh, by May of 2019, there was only 3 million Bitcoin left to mine. And that means that we, all of us, the rest of us mining Bitcoin uh, who could just came into the network right now, we were just fighting for scraps. It was just pointless for us to do it. I'll just share my screen for a bit and I'll just show you some pictures of, you obviously know that, but I'll show you some pictures of the farms, uh, of the farms and uh, yeah, that's, that's the one I wanted to, that's the farms from MineBest. Please go into the uh, into the website and uh, you know check out the farms, uh, check out their story as well because it is very important. And now what we did, because we knew that Bitcoin is not bringing in the rewards that we hoped for, what we did is we decided to back another coin. Uh, but we already had the infrastructure in place. We already spent a lot of money on building the farms, building the infrastructure, and there were more and more equipment coming in. So uh, what we came up with was obviously Bitcoin Vault, and uh, and you've got it on your website, the Bitcoin Vault thing. Now Bitcoin Vault is in all essence Bitcoin improved. It runs on the very same algorithm, the SHA two five six algorithm. The transactions look very much the same. The limitations are similar as well because there's only twenty one million Bitcoin Vault available, but you can mine it on the same machines you mine Bitcoin. So all you have to do is just switch the pool, pull the, you know, pull the trigger, and what is happening is we're going to mine Bitcoin Vault. But there are two differences. First of all, we have the, uh, the thing called the cancellation key. See, every year about, you know, billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin are just lost due to theft, or erroneous transactions. And you know very well that uh, if you make an erroneous transaction, once it's passed, once it's you know approved, the money is gone because there's nothing you can do about it. So with Bitcoin Vault, there's that availability and we're going to turn it on as a feature in the coming months. You can actually cancel a transaction within 24 hours. So Bitcoin Vault is not really your coin to buy coffee, is it? but it's not intended to be a coin to buy coffee. It's a value holder. It's a value holder and it's intended for you or anyone else to make transfers of large quantities of cash, which means that it is in demand just for that purpose. Also, Bitcoin Vault is much more evenly distributed because when we started mining Bitcoin Vault, before we started mining that, what we did is we, I went all around the world. I was trying to sell the, on the idea of Bitcoin Vault to our members. And they bought, I mean, like everyone bought a package, at least one. So uh, when Bitcoin came into the market in, 20, in 2008, after 12 months, there was only like 475 wallets and you couldn't buy anything for it. When Bitcoin Vault came onto the market on the 16th of December of 2019, we already had 150 internal wallets, and uh, very soon you will be able, you would be able to buy mining packages for Bitcoin Vault, which means that we had two very distinctive uh, features that we need for a project like that to work. We had the industry, I'm talking about the machines, the infrastructure, the power, all of that malarkey, and we had economy of scale, which means the wallets, better distribution many more people interested in we knew that the value of the coin is going to grow and we predicted at least 800 percent growth in 2020 and we actually exceeded it and i will tell you why so we started doing that people started to be very interested in, in bitcoin vault and once we started mining we obviously uh, got 
a lot of interest the value of the coin started going up we started for about with about two dollars in value four dollars in value and right now it's like what you know 428 dollars something like that i just last i checked so um so when the value started to going up we became the victims of something that is called a hash war so everyone who could mine a bitcoin they just started joining the pool and they started to you know taking over taking over the pool and mining more bitcoin for themselves so we turned to a world digital mining organization and we applied for their mining standard and a mining standard for digital world mining organization actually prevents things like over like over mining through a democratic process in which the community which is the largest mining community actually can impose limitations on all the participants of the pool as to how much hash rate they can use up uh, to mine the coins and once we did it the the, the over mining stopped the hash rate stopped we were we were accused of actually manipulating the pool and to all intents and purposes you can ang you, you could say that we're doing that but it's not illegal it's uh, it's actually highly moral and ethical and the world Mo digital mining organization they have a separate website uh, and they're based in the united states uh, actually actually are fighting to get more people interested in the industry they are working with the industry leaders to introduce the standard as a golden standard in all mining uh, for all the coins why because, because if we regulate a bit, it's a self-regulating thing as well. If we regulate a bit, we can get more people into the industry, more interest. We can actually make it a safer investment environment as a whole. I'm not talking about mining city. I'm talking about the entire mining industry. And actually, actually, applying, yeah, actually applying that standard, actually applying that standard created more value for the coin because people got interested in that and when they once they went to the to the to the exchanges they saw the coin they saw the rise of the coin they started investing in that and that obviously brought the value up again so because the coin is a value holder it's not being traded as quickly as all the other coins and that means that we are joining two separate paradigms of coin production proof of work which is the machines and proof of stake which is people holding the coin Hotlink the coin actually is a better term for that. So um, that brings the value up again and again and again. So we came up with this plan of uh, adding features to bump up the interest, to you know spread out the coin. And uh, we launched it fourth quarter of 2019, as you can see it. We integrated the first wallets in the first quarter of 2020. Now, very soon, you will be able to actually take your ledger, hold wallet. And uh, and get a Bitcoin Vault on this. We started launching Bitcoin Vault on various exchanges, and uh, every month we're adding an exchange or two. There are many more in the world. I can't tell you which they are because we have to sign NDA to NDA with every single exchange we're talking to. And well, please understand that. So now we are actually going to third quarter of 2020, as you can see here on the timeline. And the fourth quarter, third quarter of 2020, we are going to addition to do the integration of additional key. So the additional key is the reverse transaction key or cancel transaction key, uh, as it were. This is going to peak the interest even more because this is going to allow for Bitcoin Vault to be the medium of transfer of large amounts of digital assets. This is going to be very exciting for us, and we want to see what happens because people want to exchange Bitcoin for Bitcoin Vault in order to try to safely transfer the assets. That's going to be amazing. And obviously in the fourth quarter is the most important thing for us, the implementation of global marketing campaign. Uh, now this actually circles back to your question, why are we not open to United States and why we want to be open to United States? You see, when the coronavirus situation set in, we thought that this is going to have a huge impact on our business because we are now exempt from traveling. We are now stuck at home. We are sitting here. We can only do the Zoom things from my mom's basement, basically, which is a horrible situation for a company that only deals in marketing and face-to-face -face marketing. And uh, it wasn't so. It was quite the opposite. The business started booming we started to have exponential growth of sales. Why? Well, 
basically because the global economy is in slumps. I mean, everyone knows that money is being printed, that uh, there is a huge financial catastrophe coming. So the traditional investment, traditional uh, markets are actually on the defensive. And there is a growing interest in cryptocurrencies. And Bitcoin Vault was, uh, I say, the first benefactor of that thinking. So what we decided is that this is not a time to rest on our laurels and be happy that we actually achieved our, our, our goal for 2020. We achieved it in March. Now we have to work much harder to actually keep up this momentum and ensure a very, very steady and sustainable growth of the coin. First of all, we basically totally switched into receiving our our gratification in Bitcoin Vault. That means that we are now interlocked with the coin. We have to have the value of the coin grow because we are getting our money in Bitcoin Vault. But the second of all, as I said, what we are doing, the business model that we are doing has one great drawback. Lack of global legal structure for this type of business. Once we saw the problem that Genesis Mining as a legitimate mining operation in United States had a problem with SEC, we decided to block uh, United States, actually the entire North America, we had decided to block them from uh, direct access to the website. Because SEC is powerful enough and it has so much pull, especially here in Poland, America, I don't know guys, but like, we're like, a, we're like an additional state here. Whatever you guys say in USA goes here. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's so SEC has an incredible pull here. And if they found that they are unhappy with any aspect of what we are doing, we could be shut down here in Poland. And uh, we did not want that because we now have a responsibility to hundreds of thousands of members. So we looked into the situation of Genesis Mining. We looked into their problems with SEC and we decided that if they had a problem and they did not, they were not selling Terahash Power. Actually, Terahash Power was much better than what they sold. But uh, would we be able to stand up to the scrutiny? And uh, what we did is we blocked the website and we engaged uh, a law firm in New York and in Las Vegas. Oh, not in Las Vegas, I'm sorry, uh, Miami as well. Now, for various reasons, Miami is also the seat of the World Digital Mining Organization. So we wanted to have uh, someone local there who knew the, the ins and outs of the, of, 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 of the Dade County legal staff. And we wanted someone in New York because, because New York, because reasons. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and what happened is that they are actually working on a way of presenting our business to SEC that would make them grant us a license even, not just, like be, not just be compliant with the current regulation, but also get sort of pat on the back, a seal of approvals, that type of thing from them. If not from them, then any other authority that could give it to us, because, uh, then again, this is United States. If we get an approval from you guys, uh, that basically goes for the rest of the world and we are going to be safe there. That, that being said, it doesn't mean that we, are, that we are not looking into other avenues. We are actually applying for license in South Korea and we are applying in licenses in Philippines as well. Uh, but, Two things, South Korea is also very unclear about the laws. They just passed a law taxing, in, uh, providing an income tax for, for cryptocurrencies. And Philippines is, it's just Philippines. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's much more complicated there because what we do there actually would be considered a financial service. So we have to get a financial license there for doing that. Not just the network marketing, the MLM license, but also the financial license, but we are looking into that as well. So in order to comply with all the regulations of ECC, in order to gain their approval for the future, we did something that you guys already asked about, Peter asked about it, you know, 
should we be actually selling something physical? Our product would have to be something physical because the, the, the computing power is much too vague for the United States regulations. So we were looking into the idea of actually selling the machines themselves. But obviously, if I'm going to sell you one machine, which is capable of about 665 terahash power, for example, um, that already determines the price of the packages. And the price of the packages is structured so that it satisfies customers in many countries. The $300 package is something that is easy and very attainable for countries in Latin America, for example, or in Africa. The $12,650 package, this is something that has been requested by clients in Japan for whom this is not a large amount of money. But if we were going for sell of machines, direct sell of machines, that means the packages would have to be very easily, very, very highly structured. Like $2,000 would be, I suppose, the basic package. It would be even more than that because buying a machine is not enough. You also have to service it. You also have to have the, the power thing. You also have to connect it. It's a, it's a, it, you know, it's a, it, it's a whole deal of things that you have to do. It's a whole like universe of things that you have to do before that machine actually starts giving you mining rewards. So you have to consider that. But, but again, this is something I cannot tell you now and disclose to you. We are looking for ways of, we are looking for ways of, um, of getting that, of getting that. Uh, of getting that uh, product, that physical product, to the customer that would actually satisfy the, the financial requirements of our customers and the requirements of SEC. And once we do that, and the time frame we are looking at here is until the end of the year, is when we are going to unblock uh, unblock all the countries. There's also, uh, uh, we are going to unblock, no, well, not all the countries because, uh, there are countries which have to be blocked simply because, uh, you know, network marketing is just not allowed there. And this is vis-a-vis -vis China. That's like network marketing, which has more than three levels, is just not allowed at all. So it's blocked. It's, you know, we can't, we can't, we can't sell that officially. So, uh, so, 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 so this is the reason why certain parts of the world are blocked. And the United States, as I said, it's not blocked because someone has a problem with us. We have not had any reports. We didn't have any run-in with the government or the authorities. We are just being cautious. As I said, the pool of SEC in other countries is just huge. So we will see how that goes until the end of the year. And I tell you, this is the most important thing that we are doing. Why? Again, that circles back to Bitcoin Vault. If you look at this little chart, which says $435 now, uh, you know why it falls? It falls not because the value falls. The value goes up very steadily. It falls because the value of Bitcoin is going up as well. And this is a Bitcoin, and this is Bitcoin to Bitcoin vault. So uh, this is not a fall. This is actually a very steady rise in value. And now we have noticed something that is absolutely incredible. We have noticed that since the interest in mining vault is in mining Bitcoin vault is peaking, and it is also peaking in terms of transfers on the exchanges, more exchanges get into that. We're actually now getting inquiries from the exchanges. Well, we have to we have to ride that wave. So, what would be the future of Bitcoin vault? Well, the future of Bitcoin vault for us right now, as we see it, is making it second only to Bitcoin and the first in large transfers. That means we want to make it, we want to market it to the world, to the entire world, and we want to market it as a viable alternative to any other cryptocurrency. Two reasons, security and fair distribution. More people have it, more people can actually decide what happens with the market. It's much more democratic if you, if you like. And to do that, in order to introduce Bitcoin Vault to the world like that, there can be no question of our, of our legality, of our compliance. We cannot, we cannot just let it pass. We cannot just go and say, you know, 
yeah, what we do is, you know, what we do is pretty cool. We're doing it like, you know, the heart is in the right place. The problem is that you guys haven't come up with legislation yet. You know, come up with the legislation. We're just like, what we're doing is, you know, this is, in this country, it's okay. In this country, it's in the gray. In America, who knows? No, we can't do that. If we want Bitcoin Vault to go global and we want it and we need to do it, we have to be compliant and the best compliance there is is with SEC. So this is the thing that we want to do. Our well, sort of lost my trade of thought there <laughs> for a second, but I'm actually coming up with this like on the spot. Uh, it's not it's not a written it's not a written presentation. <laughs> I just I just stop sharing the screen, so you can see me. So uh, so where do we go from here? Well. First of all, two things. We want to start while we are doing the things in the background, which is the compliance, you know, getting the licenses, changing the profile of what we do a bit. Obviously, we are changing a profile. We also have to stay true to our clients. I mean, we have a written contract with many of with many clients right now. They cannot be left hang out to dry. We cannot just say, "Oh, now we're selling something else." That's it. Uh, what we are going to be selling in the future, how we're going to be conducting our business in the future has to be compatible with what we are doing right now. And that goes without saying, right? This is, you know, this is because we have a responsibility. And if we, if in, per, in pers, pursuing, in pursuing legality, like formal legality and compliance, we were to abandon our, uh, you know, our, our agreements with, with, with current clients, that would actually mute the whole point. That would make the whole point void. But, you know, that would immediately close the case for us. So uh, that's the difficulty there. So while we are resolving these issues, we are doing other things that are going to bring up the value, value, of, the value of the coin and the volume of the trade as well. First of all, the wallets. We already have the wallets for PCs, for Macs, we have the wallets for Android phones. The gold wallet is going to be soon available for iOS as well. This is very important, especially for clients in uh, Asia and especially in Japan. You know, Japan is about 99.9% .9 iOS. So uh, those wallets are very, very required there. Ledger wallet is coming. The third key is coming. So the, 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 the cancel key is coming. This is also going to be a boost. But also at the end of the year, what we are going to do is we're going to come up with um, Mining City 2.0. And the 2.0 is the, it's the evolution of a website that you're seeing right now, the evolution of a system and a mobile phone app also for iOS and for Android. And that mobile app is going to be helpful to you guys. You can interact with the system much better. You can actually work and look at it much better. It's going to be brilliant. All of that is going to help uh, the evolution of the coin. So that's what is going to happen to happen right now. We also we also are going to be welcoming people from all over the world, which also right now is a mute point because of the lockdowns and the impending lockdowns that are going to come in September and the ones we just had. But uh, we are welcoming everyone to our offices here in Poland and to the farms in Kazakhstan. And if anyone can go to China and see the Chinese farms, yeah, sure, why not? We can arrange that. But uh, right now, that's that point is a bit, you know, off the mark. Uh, now, where are we going to go from here? Well, in terms of uh, in terms of our development, is uh, we have we have had a tremendous success, and uh, I'm using this word like Donald Trump now. Tremendous. Oh God, I'm sorry. Well, it is a huge success anyway. So, uh, you know, we made over a billion dollars in global sales last month, but uh, our expenditures for the infrastructure, for the machines, for electricity maintenance, all that stuff, those expenses are about 64% of what we earn. The company runs on about 2% of what we earn, plus on the margin we can get from, uh, from the cost of electricity. Now, why it's structured like that? It is structured like that because of Korea. Korea was the first country that we opened up uh, to, and that was the first country where we actually started to apply for the, uh, for the, um, for the license, 
for the MLM license. And uh, well, with the Korean government, it's like you apply for the license and you wait. They can do it for years. They can just review your case for years. And obviously they have a huge problem reviewing ours because they don't have the right set of laws as many countries don't. And what we are doing now with Korea, what Korea actually, uh, Korean laws actually demand is that you spend about 63%, no less than 63%, actually that's about 62%, I think, no less than 62% on the infrastructure, so we decided it's 63% on the infrastructure on the product itself, that the marketing thing, it can only run up to 35%, no more. So we applied that to our module as well. And, uh, and the rest is you know, up to you. So the 2% is what, hap you know, is, was what we live on. So uh, straight, for full disclosure, now you know how that features money-wise, you can see that we need this project to be long-term. We need it to be long term because if we want to get to our riches, and we do, I mean, we are doing it for the money, ultimately, we need it to be long term and we need it to be sustainable. And uh, this is our goal. And this is what we are going to be working towards in the coming months. Uh, yeah, so that would be in a very, in a very, in a very, in a very short in a very short presentation that would be the mining city now as far as the technical part a part of it is concerned i would rather refrain from talking about technicalities as i said i am a marketing person i'm the marketing guy ayal and his people are the technical people and i can get you someone from uh, from from miners to talk about the technicalities of it all to talk about the farms the terahash power the exact amount of machines we have running stuff like that you can also find it on the website of uh mindbus so 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 you can educate yourselves but this is also a very important thing that i'd like to say before we do the q a uh as i said we didn't have when we started this we didn't have i didn't have any experience in in, in network marketing and the immediate immediate advantage of network marketing that came to my mind was that there was the element of education and education makes for much better partners in any business that we do so um, now we're going to do the q a uh, session i'm going to answer all your questions to the best of my abilities but uh if you if you if you if you if you have any other doubts any questions please educate yourself go online you know check what they're talking about. like there's a lot of shit being talked about about uh, pardon my french about mining city but uh we expected that i mean they as i said the business model is very very it's the same business model that the cheaters had basically so the difference between us and people who actually scammed you is that we are honest and we have to prove ourselves you know as far as we're doing that so the licensing the stuff like we're going the compliance is going to be another way of us proving ourselves to all our clients but there's also going to be people who are losing money because we are taking their networks we are taking their clients who are coming over to us because you know we provide a better service let's not you know let's not be coy about that so we provide a better service they come over to us so you're going to have you know, we're going to have attacks, but we also get great reviews. And I don't think there's a single member of our company, not a single client that came out unsatisfied, which is saying a lot uh, for a company that is, that, you know, that has just changed, uh, you know, we changed the entire, the enti we pivoted from Bitcoin to Bitcoin vault, basically. So if we're able to pull that off and keep clients satisfied and happy, and everyone was happy they had no complaints whatsoever that is that is saying a lot and i'm saying i'm saying i'm saying that that last thing especially you know in relation to what what you said me peter because there's also people there are always people who are going to be attacking you now um they'll be doing it for different reasons they'll be doing it because they don't know better they'll be doing it because they lost clients they'll be doing it because they had some bad experiences in this business with some other companies and they, they would like to honestly warn someone against taking a step into the bad direction which i think is great people should actually warn each other about that stuff and uh and the second thing is that they are going to they are going that is like the, the last thing is some of them are going to do it just for the money they're going to talk shit about you until you just pay them to go and get lost 
Um, that's the people. That's the people we hate the most. But there are people like that as well. Okay, I'm going to get to the question things. All right. So when we'll um, be able to order the credit cards? Okay, the credit cards, the debit cards. Actually, they're not credit cards. They're debit cards. Uh, the credit card, they're not credit cards, they're debit cards, and we are already running tests uh, on them with uh, some of the top leaders from uh, Africa, from Asia, and from Europe. The thing is that uh, we had to postpone this uh, project a bit because of the coronavirus. The company we're doing it with, an outside company from the UK, who are actually facilitating the exchange of the coins. We cannot do the exchanges ourselves because that would be illegal again for a network marketing company to deal in any exchanging. Uh, they had, uh, they were hit by coronavirus pretty hard. They had to lock down for about three months. So the project got delayed, but last month we started testing and I hope that within two months we will be back with, we will be back with, uh, with the, with the debit cards available to our clients and our uh, members. If the minimum were to be $2,000 in the United States, how would it be possible to even market it here? Is there any way to rent or purchase a portion of the machine. There is a way to rent or purchase a portion of the machine. The problem is that a single machine can be only, uh, can be only shared by two people. With the current pricing structure, 65, um, 65 telehash could be shared by about 15 people, which again goes against the rules of SEC. So the idea for us is quite different. I am, I, I'm, <laughs> to be honest, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's quite complicated right now, so we have to simplify it. So there are lawyers working on that, but there is a way to do it. Should I buy BTC V outright or buy mining packages? That depends on your purchasing power. You see, you know, uh, if you buy, if you, if you have money, only, you know, only enough money for, for a Bitcoin vault mining package, like for example, $2,000, uh, I think it's better for you to buy a mining package. Uh, if you have a million dollars, well, I would, you know, definitely buy BTC. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. Well, that's that's quite difficult to answer because uh, when you have one million dollars, what you're going to do is you're going to buy a lot of packages, and then you're going to structure a binary tree, and then that money is going to start working for you, and uh, and actually, that would make buying BTCV, BTCV a bit mute. So I would have to say that for now, mining is the best option for mining packages, are the best option for BTC, BTCV. Uh, I think that we are going to have problem with mining once we saturate the network and once we actually go up to the levels of value that Bitcoin holds. But those two things, I will be ex you know, mutually exclusive because of the digital mining organization's uh, protocol. So I think that mining is going to be profitable for a long, long time now. Uh, I'd like to ask through Mike. Yeah, Jevon, uh, please. Yeah, I've got, uh, there's actually a website I found a while back when I was doing research. Yeah. You mentioned earlier, I'm gonna share this link here. You mentioned yeah. earlier something about uh, that other uh, Genesis mining and how the yeah. SEC had gone after them once. I don't know if you knew this, but the SEC revoked their cease order. Back yes, in they, they, we know oh, that they okay. did. We, we know that they did, we know that they did, but while doing that, I think the courts actually created a precedence where, uh, by which uh, cryptocurrency is now a commodity in the United States and falls under some additional, additional regulations. I am not sure, but we were actually advised by our lawyers about that. So, uh, <laughs> so that's I was, so, so we know. I about was curious. Yeah. I was just curious about that because I was wondering. Yeah. I, I was tempted to join Genesis Mining because now yeah. they're open to the U.S., but I just didn't know if I should or not. I think that actually Genesis Mining is one of the few really honest and and cool operations out there. Like okay. honestly, I'm 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 not I I don't know much about what they're doing, but now that I think they're really they're like one of the most honest companies out there. Seriously, awesome. Uh, totally, I totally, I totally, I totally wholeheartedly you know support them. The problem is that they are mining Bitcoin, we are mining Bitcoin Vault, and you know, Correct. right now, Bitcoin Vault is just simply more profitable for anyone to own. Uh, there was a question concerning repurchases. Now, repurchases are going to be, I think we're going to get rid of the repurchases. The repurchases are creating a difficult legal situation for us in the US because uh, that means that you're only getting like, uh, you are getting 
a percentage of a percentage of a point of uh, more mining rewards because you get more mining, more telehash power. But it's difficult for us to calculate. I mean, it's not difficult for us to calculate because that's doing, being done by algorithm, but it's difficult for you to calculate uh, as, a, as a member. And uh, most people actually turn it off. We used to have it on by default. Uh, this was something that was first required by, uh, by our Korean members. So this was why it was 100% by default. We want to get rid of it in the near future. And uh, we, actually, we actually recommend that you turn it off uh, by yourself. I, uh, there you go. <laughs> I, just, I just knocked on my own, knocked down my own company. Yeah, it's, um, it's not cool. <laughs> Don't do the repurchasing. Uh, yeah, if it, it's yeah, if with repurchases you actually prolong that plan a little bit, it's um, it's totally pointless. Don't do that. Don't do the repurchases. Uh, we're going to get rid of those. And you heard it here first, please don't spread that information because I don't know if that's, <laughs> I don't know if we have decided that this is open yet, but we are like what? Uh, 65 people here on the line. So you heard it first here, folks, but please just, <laughs> yeah. Some people think that repurchase is good. Uh, that is actually connected with some rewards uh, in the binary system. But ultimately, as I said, we want to go for compliance and for compliance, repurchases are not that good because that creates a really difficult situation for people to calculate the mining rewards. And this is not something that SEC or any other authority want. And uh, while we could actually report on that every day, we would soon run into a very huge bottleneck of data transfer because we are talking about over a million, half a million accounts right now, and they are growing. They are growing exponentially, as I said, because people are, people are actually afraid of what is going to happen to the regular banking system once all the money is printed. So, um, you know, I was... I was putting a down payment on a flat here in Warsaw, nothing expensive, something very small, just before, just before the lockdown. And I was buying it from an old lady. And uh, I don't know that the price of the flat was about $100,000, something like that. Flats are pretty cheap here in Warsaw. And uh, this old lady actually wanted half the money up front in cash because she was afraid that the government is going to lock people out of the banking accounts because of the pandemic and because of the economical situation. So I thought to myself, well, this is going to precipitate the growth of the crypto industry to people who have access to crypto industry because that fear is predominant everywhere. You know, she wanted that in cash because she wasn't sure if she was going to get her money out of a bank if, if anything should happen. Nothing happened, obviously, not yet, but it could. And people still think about that, it could. So, you know, People feel safer keeping keeping the crypto assets on the cold wallets than they do in banks. That's 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 obviously. What happens to legacy accounts, which is like uh, legacy accounts? Uh, Alina Lopez, what happens to legacy accounts? Could you please explain more legacy accounts? What you mean? So hi, thanks for yes, taking hi. my question. Yep. Um, so I have an account and. I pass away. I know this oh, whole oh, oh, okay. world is okay. very new, very unregulated, right? I just want to know yes. if... Well, that's very simple. If, if, if you pass away, if you pass on and... Uh, well, in Europe, you, what you get, uh, and I suppose this is all over the world, you get, if you don't have a will written out, you are getting, going to get a notary, uh, notary assignment of uh, the estate which means all the accounts, everything. So if you come to us, if you send us the notarized, if your relatives or you know, the relatives or person who passed away, send us the, the, the notary account of the uh, saying that this person passed away, this is the first of kin, he actually is allowed the, 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 all the, has the rights to the estates. What we do is we reapply that account to that person. It's, it's, it's as simple as that, it's as with any asset that you have. Um, there's also a question. Great, thank you. Uh, there's also a question of our Kazakhstan government and Chinese government fully on board, including taxation regarding our funds. The Kazakhstan government and the Chinese government are fully on board regarding the taxation. Actually, Kazakhstan is a much more 
is a much more crypto friendly country than you would imagine. It's a much more friendly country than you would imagine, than I would imagine. Because when I first heard about Kazakhstan, I found being in Kazakhstan, I was going like, Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, one of those stand countries, right? Uh, but it turns out that they are very developed, it's not a borrowed country, it's a very well developed country, very modern, and they have a lot of, um, and they have a lot of, a lot of uh, legal, legal uh, you know, like legal, uh, oh, I lost for a word here, legal solutions in place for the crypto industry. So the, 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 there's a taxation on the equipment that you want to import. There's a taxation on the, obviously the taxation is only required when you change crypto into fiat, but that taxation is very favorable. I think it's very low. It's about like, I don't know, maybe 4%, something like that. Uh, in China, it's a bit different. In China is fine with the farms. We can, we can farm that. Uh, and we can purchase the farms, we can purchase the power, we can host them, uh, it's, it's totally legal. They, 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 uh, the taxation is not a problem as well. The problem is network marketing, which is why we are not available in China uh, as a network marketing company. Where do you see the coin price going? Well, uh, the prediction for the price of the coin until the end of the year, and it is not our prediction, it is uh, an outside prediction, is, uh, $1,500 by the end of the year. I would say $1,000 by the end of the year is much more profitable unless, unless we have a huge, huge, huge lockdown again and people are going to be panicking and they want to go into crypto instead of uh, regular markets. And I could see that totally. I could totally see that happening. Uh, within five years, it could be up to $6,000. And this is, again, an outside prediction I've just read about. Uh, I also ha have to tell, say one thing that I forgot to talk about uh, uh, during my little speech, and it's coin market cap reporting. We want to start reporting fully to coin market cap in a couple of months uh, because right now we are not listed. But again, this is something that we want to do once we have more, uh, more, 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 more compliance in place because then we are going to be out there for everyone to see. And uh, with coin market cap, uh, with the market cap of the coin being now about $3 billion, we are going to be in the top 10 coins in the market. So eyes of the world are going to be on the coin. And, you know, if we're not transparent and fully clear to everyone, uh, that could go anyway, right? So this is, so this is, Exactly. Is Mindbus exclusively mining city for no, mining city? Uh, Mindbus is exclusively mining for mining city right now. Okay, so I've, it's sorry. hosting only for mining city. Yeah. So I had a I had a few questions myself. Um, yeah. Go a few questions that I had. So first and foremost is you know obviously I'm in the United States. A lot of the people that I've been looking into possibly bringing into the company are in the United States, and some of them are getting a little bit shy because of the fact that you know. In order for them to access, they have to use a VPN. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I can't actually, you know, like, if I want to stay compliant with SEC, I cannot advocate that. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I cannot say, I, you're recording this. I cannot say that you should do it. You should not do it. <laughs> but uh, as I said, end of the year, end of the year is the time frame in which we are looking at full compliance and then the release of... Uh, regular regular mining city operations for us and north america okay so let's put it this way i mean as long as people are doing things ethically and morally correct as far as the way they're doing it then yes you know there's also one very important thing uh we have had in the past we have had problems with certain members mm -hmm. taking you know because if you if you're looking at it as a business and you're trying to resell those packages to anyone or, 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 you know, or you want to get your income from the referrals. Uh, you obviously are going to sell to a lot of people who may have a different level of understanding of the cryptocurrency market. So we had a couple of instances of people actually going out to potential new members and saying, like, if you pay me cash, I am going to buy those, uh, those packages for you. Uh, and that... Uh, that is bordering on illegality, not for us as a company, but for people who are actually doing it because they are taking cash for something that they are not actually selling because we sell it, right? And we sell it for 
cryptocurrencies. And we're doing that obviously for taxation and legal reasons again as well. So, um, so first of all, we actually disavow people like that. And we, 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 well, we, we're not being brutal about it because maybe that comes from misunderstanding, but we had problems with those situations and we uh, had a campaign in the past actually pre preventing people from doing that. And now we are looking at a new solution for new members who may not be very familiar with crypto. We are, talk we are talking to a company who could provide us with a nice solution of people paying by credit card, but us actually getting crypto. It's, uh, you know, it, it's going to, to warrant a little premium, I think about two or four, 4%, but, uh, but it would actually stop people from, 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 you know, fraudulently taking money from people they shouldn't be taking from. So, you know, though, though, that, though, though, those things have happened. And, uh, and, and as I said, we are very, why I mentioned that is because you said about people doing things ethically. It is very important for us that our members actually are ethical, mm -hmm. that they use the, you know, the right wording, that they don't, that you know that they don't lead people into a stray path of of, of promising there's something that we cannot deliver or cannot be delivered at all at the industry you know we do not regulate the industry we do not have any influence over the value of the coins what we can do and what we do is we can provide you with the the referrals uh, income we can provide you with the best possible mining rewards and uh, we have been doing that for two years now, over two years, and uh, and that's it. And you know, it's very important for any new members. And this is something that I always, always underline in any of my speeches or any meetings. I want new members to educate themselves. I want them to be totally sure that they want to do it, and I want them to be sure that you know, when once they do it, like you know, check it every day. Withdraw the withdraw the, 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 the funds if you want to. Withdraw the, the, the digital funds because you can withdraw them every day. They're coming to you every day and you can withdraw them every day. Withdraw into an outside wallet. Feel safe about it. Know what you are doing. Know who you're getting into the bed with, basically. And, uh, and, and we've been very lucky in that respect that a lot, of, uh, a lot of our leaders in the network marketing structure are very ethical and responsible people, and you know this is this is this is a heaven set. I'm just like this is this is just a blessing, because uh, we have to rely on those people. We have to rely on leaders like you as well, uh, because as I said, I am not a network marketing person by uh, by definition. Now I've got experience in that. Now I'm, you know, now I'm halfway there. But like there's still leaders who simply outgrow me in their knowledge, their experience. And you know the presentation skills, whatever. Uh, so uh, this is people. These are the people I rely on, and it is paramount that they are ethical, as you said. Let me ask you this question in relation to the <clears throat> in relation to the uh, the debit card that will yeah. be coming out. Um, if let's say everything is not you know settled with uh, the regulations that are necessary for the United States. Will the United States people that are in that actually have a VPN, will they be able to access the debit card? Yes, the debit card is actually, the debit card has nothing to do with the SEC. You will be able to access it. You will be able to withdraw funds in the United States. We are actually checking that as well. We are testing it as well. It is done independently. It is done with Visa and Union Pay. So it's going to be open to you guys. Perfect. Also, also, also there was a question if, uh, if, for example, we can do like a different, different price structure for different, uh, for different, uh, I think, I think that's how I understood the question. Uh, can we do different price structures for different regions? And my answer would have to be no, because with different price structures for different reasons, we would have to actually incur on people's, on people's, on people's current uh, binary structure of the trees, you know. Um, the, 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 the structure of the binary tree is pretty, the marketing compensation plan is pretty complicated, but it, you know, it does, it does, uh, it does, uh, your rewards, the rewards you're getting actually do stem from the money that you put in. So uh, if you, for example, had an access to less money than, than, than people down your line, you would be getting less rewards. So we want everyone to have the access or ability to purchase the very same, uh, you know, the telehash pad, the very same mining packages. I don't know if you can break this down or not, but say, for example, in the, in the compensation plan, 
um, when you receive five points on one side, five points on the other side, that's essentially creating about $6,000 that's coming into the company, correct? Uh, well, yeah, it's it's five, five. essentially, yes. Yes, right. Essentially, yes, that, 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 that's what happens. Right. And so for a person to be actually meaning a builder to actually be paid out on that, they are going to get a referral um, for a cycle of two hundred dollars. Right. Yes. Okay. I'm, I'm depending, just talking. depending that, that exactly. But uh, right. it's, I'm not talking to about, about the, 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 the referrals bonus because that is just dependent on your rank. And that's fine. But, you know, you could have people under you who have bought platinum packages while you only bought a standard package, for example. Correct. And uh, that means that, you know, if they build the trees, the, 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 the amount of money that is coming to you is limited by the amount of money that you actually put into the company. So you'll be getting the rewards up to the, up to the level that you're getting, uh, that you have paid in. And uh, obviously you're not losing those commissions. Those commissions are being held for you to, to, to receive at a later date. But uh, if we limit, if we limit, if we limit people's access uh, to certain solutions, uh, to certain to certain packages, that would mean that they would not be able to level up. That's uh, you know that that that's that's the, that's the, that's the concern that I have. But uh, I'll tell you what, we are doing a we are doing a series of uh, marketing videos about about the system and uh, new marketing materials as well about the system. They will be out in about in this month, actually. Well, not this month because this month is ending. So I'm sorry, the beginning of August, uh, we'll be waiting for those videos to be released alongside the, uh, the tutorial on uh, how, to, how, to, how to move uh, Bitcoin Vault to Ledger. So um, I hope they will make the system more clear. We'll also be working on on simplifying the system perhaps because we do want to go into China but in order to simplify the system we have to again satisfy everyone's requirements everyone's needs and with a growing network of people it's not easy but uh, some things have to be done like we talked about repurchases and I said like repurchases some people think they're good some people think they're not if the if deleting the repurchases is going to help us with compliance I'm going to do it because uh, you know, even if some people are unhappy with it. And uh, I'll tell you why, because at the end of the day, uh, my idea is to run the company responsibly and, you know, and to make it sustainable. So if you're not making a lot of, if you're be, if by deleting repurchases, someone will be stopped from making $5 a week more. I'm, you know, and they will be unhappy because they lost $5. I am happy to do that because they will be happy that our company lasts for the next 10 years and they can do it longer. They don't have to worry about what they're going to do with a network and they don't have to worry about the legality of it all. You know, it's the peace of mind is something that you can't put a price on. And the peace of mind for the company is also the peace of mind for the members, especially in the network marketing structure. So, uh, yeah. And uh, if you look at the history of the company, we already did that once. A very unpopular decision of cutting uh, terahash rates because terahash rates uh, of the old uh, of the old miners that we had were unable to perform and uh, the cost of the miners went up so if we didn't cut the terahash rate we would actually have to we would actually have to stop paying out uh, uh, mark not marketing but uh, mining uh, rewards and we did that and it was a very unpopular move with uh, the members at the time but in about two weeks, it took about two weeks for us to be praised for that because people say, well, I saw that you are doing something that is responsible. This is something that is supposed to keep the company going for years and years uh, in the future. And you're not just thinking about day-to-day -day profits. I mean, like, we're not, as I said, we need for this to be, we need for this to be, to be a long-term investment for us because we have to get the money back from uh, what we paid to the infrastructure. So would there I, be a maximum limit of the card? Uh, I just I just answered this question because I saw it pop up. The maximum please. limit for the card is twenty thousand dollars per day, I believe. Yeah. Okay. So the point that I was basically trying to make and illustrate, and maybe you can illustrate it better, yep. is that no matter what a particular builder would essentially or a person would be receiving commissions, whether it's through the you know payout um, compensation plan part one, part two, part three, four or five, whatever, yeah. that the company is still going to be receiving, you know, more than enough money 
to actually continue to be paying out that marketing structure over a period of time so that it continues. Of course, of course, the, the, the payments for your marketing structure actually do not go forever. Right. <laughs> it is not structured as an infinite plan because that would be really stupid and it couldn't be. If, if the trees, if the trees, if the trees stop building, if there's a waning interest in the product, you know, those rewards would actually stop and everything that you would have to go on is just a mining reward. And, uh, but this is not due to our, you know, this is not due to our doing. This is something that the network has to do for itself. We have no hand in that, right? It's, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's. Uh, this is how I see it. So, uh, in order to keep everyone satisfied, up the line, you know, if you want to make it like a retirement plan for other people to work for you, which, uh, well, I guess it's something that is very desirable, but is it fair? I don't know. Uh, but we have to. What we have to do as a company, and we what we can do, and what we are doing is uh, provide you with a better and better product, you know, for people to keep, you know, to, to, to be interested in that. So, you know, now it's Bitcoin Vault and it's going to be Bitcoin Vault for many years to come. But uh, uh, the, 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 the debit cards, this is another, another, another thing like that. And when we come up with this plan of selling something that is physical, that's going to be another product. You know, this is something that we, and, you know, those products, when they, when they interlock with each other, when they work together, this is something that is going to bring uh, that interest, you know, that interest boiling and people are going to be building their trees and that re those rewards will be going upline, obviously. But, uh, you know, as long as people stop paying, as long as people stop buying, mm, you know, those rewards will also end. And, uh, and that, is, that is because we're not an infinite source of, of, of other people's money. <laughs> right. Um, Javon, you can ask your question, then I'll ask mine. Go ahead. Okay. So this is the last question I'm going to have for you for okay. tonight. Um, so I actually had a couple members ask me this. They wanted me to find out for them. Um, what happens when say somebody, uh, somebody who's mining over the 1100 or the 1200 day cycle, what happens if your downline decides after, after it's complete, what happens whenever it's complete do you know, and they decide they don't want to buy another package. He was, he was wanting to know what will happen to your downline and all that. Is it, you know, like with team A, team B, if somebody decided not to buy another package? Oh, actually, there are two ways of doing that. Actually, there's going to be a prompt for you to buy another package, uh, which probably you want to do if your loud night is very active. That's, uh, that's what happens. Also, you have to remember that most of those downlines are actually members, you know, actually the leaders themselves, because what happens is you buy several packages and you have them running. And there's going to be obviously that prompt for you to buy another package or exchange your packet or prolong it. Uh, that hasn't happened yet because we are not up to 1,400 days yet. And that's the one thing. And the second thing is going to be, uh, there's going to be an option of that going to your leader, to the leader up your line. If you decide to abandon, if you decide to abandon, uh, uh, to abandon the, 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 the downline, which I don't think anyone would because, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a small cost and, and, and you can still reap the rewards, especially if the downline is very active. Thank you, Greg. Okay, so um, another question I had in regards to the debit cards. Will the debit cards be something that is commissionable for people as well? We are working on a system about that. It's, uh, we want this to be a product, yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah, I'm not saying that it, we're 100% sure that it will be because there's um, two problems with that. First of all is that... Uh, a lot of people just see it as one of the services that we could render to people uh, as a company. And uh, maybe it's much better because then that would be another thing that attracts people to the company. If you become a member and you can, you can buy this card, you can, you can obtain this card because forget this is like the fee is just minimal. Uh, and, uh, and you can obtain this card and this is a service rendered only by us. And it actually, uh, it, that actually evaluates us, you know, you can evaluate us through the service as a much more customer friendly company. And uh, there are, there's a second, there's a second, there's a second, there's a second group of people saying, well, you know, we would actually, we would actually market the shit out of this product. So, so, um, so, so, you know, we are, we are actually having huge meetings right now in marketing and shouting matches over which option wins. Uh, 
and uh, you know, if you have any preferences, please let me know. Uh, let me know on a group because we, uh, you know, strangely enough, we take those preferences into account. If enough leaders say that they want to go this way or the other way, uh, we're going to do it. Uh, you know, we're not just doing it for the sake of ourselves. If we want people to be happy, we actually uh, allow them to have the to have the voice. So, a couple other questions that I wanted to ask, yeah. and and um, I believe one is extremely important in relation to Coin Market Cap and um, it not being listed essentially as correctly as it should be right now because of the fact that you can see that on the Explorer, but you can't see that on Coin Market Cap right now. Mm -hmm. When that actually comes out and is listed two months, let's say three months, whatever it is from now, yeah, people that are contemplating and essentially, you know, saying, okay, well, I don't know me, I'll wait a little while and then I'll build a team or I'll build right now. What is the, the benefit that you can say to actually building right now? Because when coin market cap is listed correctly, the price will be essentially more, correct? Yeah, the, first of all, the price will be more. That is essentially, that is essentially much, that is a bigger risk. Obviously, by that time, you're going to have more members. And you have to understand one thing. With mining in cryptocurrencies, with mining, what happens is that the more people join, the higher the hash rate of the entire, uh, of the entire pool, which means that the mining rewards are going to fall physically. That's just like, you know, it's, this, it, it's a simple law of, of, of demand. There's, there's a limited number of something and more people wanting it means that you're going to get less of that thing. So the only thing that can offset that is actually the value of the coin and the value of the coin is going to be going up. But what you want to do right now, if we can, if we can anticipate that the value of a coin is going to go up and we have independent, uh, independent sources saying that it will, uh, you want to get in on the mining as soon as possible because then you can get more of the coin as a mining reward. And then you know that in the future, if you huddle it, in the future, it's going to be worth so much more. You know, you're not looking at the end value of the, uh, now, you know, you're not talking about just the end value of the coin, but the value of the entire project for you. So I don't know if I'm saying that clearly enough, you know, you right now, if you join right now, you can get more coins basically, <laughs> which are going to be worth much more in the future. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. It's the first come first safe basis, but first set here means that you actually get more of uh, what you're going to, of what you're going to be getting in the future. Everyone is going to be happy with the rewards because obviously you'll be getting more in terms of what you put in, uh, more to what you get out. But uh, those people who are first, the first early adopters are going to get even more. Simply, simple as that. I think to make a, to make a general point, just so that people understand, maybe yeah. there's some people here that are not as familiar, you know, as deep with the project as I am and other people that are, yeah. that are leaders on this webinar is that I think everyone really has to understand that whether you build a team or not, so whether you share the opportunity or not with anyone, the ability for people to actually earn their daily mining profits is still quite favorable. And I think that's something that we get in this company, whereas in other companies where you have to recruit, where recruiting is something that is necessary, not optional, but necessary versus here it's not and people can still get that ability to profit without actually doing the recruiting. And I'm seeing that in evidence with my team too, because many people who've never done a day in their recruiting, all of a sudden now they're going out and they're sharing it with other people because of the fact that they're seeing their daily mining rewards come in and they're seeing that it's on time and they're seeing that if there's any question with anything, it's getting answered by customer support, so forth and so on. So kudos to you, Greg, for all oh, that. Thanks. Uh Thanks, but this is there's another thing that is very important. When we started this company and we looked at the competition, we saw that uh, when you wanted, if you wanted to know anything about what they were doing, you would have to open up an account with them. An open app account like warranted um, introduction fee. It was like hundred dollars or something like that. Some you know low amount of money, but you had to pay it. So the first thing that we did is we got rid of that. We got rid of the introduction fee. You can open up account and you don't have to buy anything but you already have the access to all the information that are on the long, uh, landing page. So you have access to all the marketing materials, you have access to all the educational materials, you have access to all the information about the company. And this is very important for people to feel safe with what they are doing with us. And um, this is why we did that. So uh, in relation to what you said, yes, thanks. 
Okay, so the, the only other thing that I had, and I know we didn't want to make this in any way, shape, or form a technical thing, but, um, and I don't know if you can speak on it too, because um, Lucas spoke on it at another point in time when he had spoken with Hannah, and they had an actual webinar together. But a lot of people here weren't on that webinar, so I'm wondering if you can possibly go into this minor detail. And the detail is this. Mm -hmm. In the future, as Mining City is considering possibly opening up new mining farms in other countries, what are the possible countries that you are looking at at the moment? Wow. <laughs> I have a question for you before I answer. Did Lucas answer that question? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we, we were actually talking to Colombia, we we're talking to Paraguay, we were talking to United States as well. We had an offer from United States as well. But the countries where we are currently, uh, uh, and, and this is something that Lucas probably knows more about this because he is in the group within Mining City that's actually actively looking for the new places to open. While I was still doing that with AL, we were concentrating basically on Asian countries. Uh, we had, we had uh, Kazakhstan and we had Uzbekistan. Uh, those deals are still in place. We have long-term contracts there, which are 10-year contracts with a, you know, automatic prolongation to another 10 years. We have the farms in China as well, and we still have not fulfilled all our uh, all as, uh, assigned, assigned power in Kazakhstan. So uh, there's, there's still about 600 megawatts there to take for the taking. So it's a huge amount of power. Indonesia, I don't know. Indonesia, I haven't heard about Indonesia. If this is Indonesia, something it's something new. But we heard about Colombia. We heard about Latin American countries. There was a, also there was also a gentleman from Texas. But I think that the deal fell through. There was something fishy about that. We could not actually believe that you'd have a favorable. Uh, a favorable price of electricity in Texas, but uh, mm. the the weirdest place, the weirdest place we had an inquiry from, was Iran. And uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, we didn't do it because of the safety of the entire network. I mean, we have to have legal safety and you know physical security for the farms as well. I mean, this is this this is this is a high stakes project. We're, to, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars being poured into our infrastructure. We can't just put it in Venezuela. We can't just put it in uh, in in Iran. We have to put it in countries where you have some legal protection, where you have some physical protection, and where you have some insurance at least. You know, that's that, that's quite important. So uh, yeah, but they, they, like I said. Uh, my information about that may be outdated because I am not in the group that Lucas is in, which is actively looking for new places of power and new places to put our... Uh, but I'll tell you something. I don't know if Lucas told you about this. Like The growth in recent months has been huge. Yeah, I know. It just hit. <laughs> uh, the growth, the growth in, uh, in, the, in the, the growth of the company has been huge. And in order to satisfy the demand for computing power from our members, we actually took advantage of the low price of, of the steady price of Bitcoin at the time, because the farms that were running for that were mining Bitcoin, especially those in China, they were, you know, they were not doing it profitably because uh, in China, I think that the price of procurement of Bitcoin was about ten thousand dollars, and at that time, Bitcoin was trading sideways at nine thousand three hundred, nine thousand five hundred. So, you know, they were gasping for air, and we took that opportunity. We actually, Al bought a couple of bought he bought a couple of farms in China outright, which you know, which gave us a huge breathing space because the most important thing in infrastructure is not even the machines. We can take care of the machines. You know, we've got a we've got an agreement with What's Mine who are doing a whole a whole production line exclusively for us. But the problem is with the electrical equipment. You know, the substations, how you get the power onto the website, onto the onto the site, onto the mining site. That stuff that can take months, up to three months. You know, to manufacture the equipment, to get it on site. And it's huge cost, so it's much more efficient to buy the entire farms. So this is what we've been concentrating on, or AI has been concentrating on in the recent months. And uh, and uh, now that the price of Bitcoin is going up, it's probably not going to be that possible. But I don't think that the smaller farms, of the smaller Bitcoin farms, especially the older ones, are going to be are going to be efficient, even with the Bitcoin price rising. 
um, they will have to cut the losses and this is when we will come in and we will basically uh, buy the infrastructure from them we will modernize the equipment and uh, and you know and, and we'll be able to give the the mining rewards we are also this is something that is related we are also very diligently looking at our sales numbers because at some point there is a physical barrier at which you can responsibly sell mining packages and we would have to limit that sales how do we reach this point this point is no we're nowhere near that point right now but you have to be aware of that. We're talking about responsibility here and that responsibility is paramount for us because again, I am not a network marketing company. I am a product company, cloud mining company that just happened to have a network marketing scheme added to its sales structure. So I have to think about the product. I have to think responsibly about the product. And I know that there is a physical barrier at some point um, at which, uh, I have to have like a like a physical buy at which we cannot buy the equipment or the, it would take too long to install the equipment you know it's a it's it creates a bottleneck and we don't want those bottlenecks uh, but we were having a long discussion about what we are going to do if we reach that point if it even if it's even possible of reaching that point but if you came to me today and said like I have two billion dollars and I want to put it down right now today to your company and I want you to have the money I would have to say no I would have to actually uh, refuse taking that money because that would create a bottleneck, for example, like right. $2 million in a day, $2 billion in a day, I'm sorry. That, that, that's, that's, that's basically the level we're talking about. So we're still nowhere near that level, so it's, it's okay. I don't think it's actually possible to, to reach it physically, but who knows. Um, someone is asking about my Facebook. I do have a Facebook, but please excuse me, it's my personal Facebook. I have pictures of my kids in there. and. Uh, uh, I've actually, you know, my, 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 my partner, actually, my, my, my girlfriend, uh, ex-girlfriend, actually, um, she chastised me for actually allowing people to see that. I totally understand her. It's a, you know, it's a privacy thing. Uh, and Facebook, I'm not really active on Facebook anymore. I think that, I think that Instagram is, this is where it's at. So we do have Instagram accounts. Uh, for MineBest, for Mining City, and obviously for me as the Mining City CEO. But also, oh, best is very important. I wanted to stress this. And I wanted to stress this, uh, you know, this is very, very important. Once we became very uh, successful and we became very famous, uh, we started noticing a lot of scams being developed in my name or Ayal's name or in Mining City name. And especially that involves especially social media. And this is very important what I'm about to say. Uh, we never contact anyone or sell anything through social media. We only sell it through the website. We can inform you about it on the social media, but we will also inform you in the official Telegram groups or WhatsApp groups. You will know about it and you only can purchase or interact with the website. Do not there are many false accounts running around. We are closing about eight accounts per week, falsified accounts in my name or the company name. We have a group of 12 people working exclusively on that right now. Company security. And I wanted to say that because uh, from what I know, some people have, have been scammed. Some people have lost money interacting with uh, fraudsters. We are working with, uh, in certain countries, we're also working with uh, authorities. For example, in Spain, there was a whole website called miningcity.es, like miningcity.espana, which was a fraudulent website and it, posed, and it used our graphics and it used some fraudulent information. And we were actually, we were contacted by Spanish authorities asking to close down the website. And what we had to do is like, no way, this is not a website, this is someone else's website. So now we're actively working with the Spanish police to bring down, bring those people to bring those people to justice. So uh, yeah, this is, this, is, this is why I wanted to point that out. Uh, since, since many people here may have been, may, maybe, maybe may, you know, maybe this is the first time we're interacting, the first time you're hearing about the company. And this is, in recent months, this has been a scourge and we are actively fighting to stop it. You know, okay. if, you, if you're doing, yeah, if you're doing something right, there's also someone who's going to attach yourself, himself to that company and try to get some money off of that, you know, just like scrape the bottom of the barrel, if it, you know. Um, there is one person. Hey, Robert, Robert, you yeah. can uh, unmute. 
Yeah, I just want to clarify a couple of quick things. So uh, you're saying mining BTC is saturated, so you're focusing on Bitcoin Vault? Yeah, uh, um, we are focus focusing on Bitcoin, but you can still buy mining. We can still buy BTC packages if you want, but I don't think that mining BTC is uh, is is uh, it, mining rewards of Bitcoin Vault are just simply bigger, and uh, so that's why people choose it. We do not we do not advocate any other way. You can choose whatever you want, but uh, the, 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 the the idea the is emphasis about 98, is on yeah the, the emphasis on this Bitcoin Vault right now because about ninety eight percent of our sales is Bitcoin Vault. So Mining City is the marketing and then MineBest is the mining company. Uh, which one yeah, controls it's... the funds? Uh, well, capital. basically what happens is well, the, the, the capital is controlled by Mining City. So what happens is that Mining City actually takes the funds, which are in uh, uh, the funds are in crypto and we transfer those, the, the, the right amounts we transfer to Mining City, to, 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 not to Mining City, but sorry, it's late. So Mining City takes the funds. We transfer the we transfer the right amounts to MineBest to pay for the services, to pay for the peripherals, for the machines, for the electricity, and so on, so on, so on. We transfer the money to the accounts of the uh, of the clients. And what we do is actually we do transfer it to a to a wallet held by Mining. It has it's accessed by Mining so by MineBest IT, and they redistribute that. According to the binary system, uh, we keep the two percent. We keep the two percent for the company running, and we, the, you know, and 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 the rest is also like we agree with uh, uh, with uh, Mindbus on what they can keep as far as the cost of electricity is concerned, because uh, uh, they get the electricity a bit cheaper than what we sell it to the customers. Obviously, this is something that uh, that they're making profits on. I see. So there's withholding for enough capital to make sure everyone yeah, gets. Yeah, 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 yes, exactly right. So the, the so so legally speaking and accounting accounting wise, the funds are controlled by Mine Best, Mining City. I'm sorry, Mining City. But um, if you're talking about technicality, how it is being controlled by who is doing the uh, redistribution of it, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's Mine Best IT. But obviously they have an approval from me. They have an approval from Mining City to do it. It's it's a uh, it's 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 not a it's not a simple it's not a simple process because you have security upon security upon security upon security. You're like guys watching guys watching guys watching guys, and you have like several levels of approval. It's hell. And you mentioned you have educational product. Did you realize that that could constitute enough to satisfy the FTC for having a physical? I don't product? know. It's an educational product. Uh, uh, we don't think it is. It would have to be. A I've whole seen other education. companies have a physical product yeah. with education. Yeah, our product. Our, we don't have an educational product. What we do is we do a lot of educational. Uh, we have a lot of educational materials, but we haven't constituted it as a single product. And we are actually we are actually devising a, a, a plan regarding that. But uh, this is not the path we would choose to take because, again. We're not an educational company. We know about mining. We know about the equipment. We know about the engineering stuff. This is what we want to do. Uh, and this is where we see our future. This is what we want to develop. We don't want to develop into a company that just wants to satisfy uh, SEC just for the sake of it. You know, we want to be, we want to be compliant with what we do in, in, in our part of the market. We don't want to bullshit people uh, into saying that, you know, we're just selling something for the sake of being, uh, for the sake of being compliant. We want to be compliant in what we do. Right on. Yeah. I know in the US okay. they have Commodity Futures Trading Commission and the yeah, SEC yeah, and yeah, FTC. Yeah, yeah, they have they, they they have they have like a lot of stuff. There. Are you from Poland, by the way? Uh, I was born Australia, but my parents are Polish, and I live in Canada. Okay, yeah, because I can see I, you've got the you've got the eagle there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, Look, if you don't have any more questions, I'll just close it down because it's like evening here and uh, uh, I think my mom wants her living room back. <laughs> I just I can't, I can't start explaining why I'm doing it from my mom's living room. But the, the truth is that before the pandemic started, I uh, started, I bought this little apartment, as I said, and I started doing refurbishing there. And then the pandemic started, and the and the and the wrecking crew they just abandoned the web, the, the site, and they, they they just escaped. And my mom said, like you know, why don't you just live with me? It's like nearby. Yeah, it's going to be a month or so, you know. It's going to take like a month. And now it's like it's the third month, and uh, we're really sick of each other now. So I don't want to stretch her. I don't want to stretch her. 
patience with me here. So if it's okay, guys, um, I would just call it a day, okay? <laughs> awesome. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, unmute everybody. And guys, you can say thank okay. you for Greg and everything that you want. Go for it for like 10 seconds. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, much. guys. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. thank you, Greg. You're amazing. Thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Thank you.